Hi, welcome to this video where we will break down the powerful metric known as dividend per share. Whether you are navigating the world of accounting exams or working in the corporate finance space, understanding DPS is key to evaluating a company's financial health and its commitment to rewarding investors. Let's dive into how DPS can guide your decisions as both a student, student and a profession in the real world. Let's look at this fantastic metric. So I share my screen quickly. Let's dive deeply into the dividends per share. Come with me now again. <laughs> Okay, so the dividend per share is a financial metric that indicates the total dividend the company pays out to each of its shareholders on a per share basis. So in an accounting period, the company generates income in the form of earnings, and part of those earnings or the total earnings is distributed as dividend to shareholders based on shareholders holding per unit of shares in that company. It is, it is an important measure, that is the DPS, for income-focused investors, as it shows how much cash they will receive in dividends for each share they own. DPS helps investors assess the income-generating potential of their investments and reflects the company's dividend policy and financial Helped. The formula is clear on the screen. The total dividend paid for the accounting period divided by the number of ordinary shares. Where the dividend paid is the sum of all regular dividends distributed to shareholders. The number of ordinary shares refers to the total number of common shares or ordinary shares owned currently or held by from stockholders or the ordinary shareholders of the company. So let's graphically look at the, an example on how to calculate this ratio using the same company we'll be using Shambu to Nigeria PLC. Okay, so in the additional information at times, the total dividend is declared in the financial statements of the company, but where it has already been provided for as a current liability but not yet paid, we see it in the current liability session. And in this company's financial statement, the total dividend as at the end of the year declared was 55 million dollars. So let's pick the total dividend declared but not yet paid. Let's take it to our Excel. If you're using your calculator, just follow me as we calculate as 55 million total to be paid for this 31st December 2020 financial year as we bring your okay, at. So it's at the end of the year, pick the figure from the beginning of the year. Okay, so let's go get the number of ordinary shares. As we can see in this caveat here, the ordinary share capital are valued at one naira each nominal value. So let's go to the SP and get our ordinary share capital, which is 200 million naira. So at one naira each 200 million naira share is valued at 200 naira, 200 million naira for each unit of share the company or shareholders own. So let's calculate our dividends by share right as our total dividend divided by share capital. We have it as 28. So each share owned by a shareholder gets 28 cocoa in return as his dividend for this particular financial. So what does this mean? Let's look at what this means. The DPS represents the portion of a company's earnings that is distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. 
it indicates how much dividend income each shareholder will receive per share. So in the case of share group two, each one naira share or unit share adds 28 gold to it. So there's an increase in value by 28 gold. So each owner or each shareholder has one naira 28 gold worth of shares in his hand or in his to his credit as of 31st December 2020. So a consistent of growing dividends per share can signal financial stability, a commitment to rewarding shareholders. And the implication is that a higher dividends per share suggests that the company is generating sufficient profits and cash flow to reward its shareholders. It may attract income-seeking investors looking for steady returns. However, if a company pays too high a dividend, it may limit or stop you its ability to reinvest some of this dividend or funds or profit in growth opportunities, expansion, and other ways to generate high income or revenue. On the other hand, a low declining dividend per share may signal financial difficulties or a change in dividend policy, which could negatively impact investor sentiment, especially those that are concerned about returns on a yearly or regular basis. So what are the costs and effects of a high DPS? The costs include strong profits, stable cash flow, or a shareholder-friendly dividend policy. So where you have policies of a yearly declaration of dividend, it impacts the situation with high dividends or a high DPS reflects in the financial statement. And the effects is clear. It attracts income-seeking investors, potential investors, analysts, and it can lead to higher share prices, but may reduce to retain earnings for a future growth. While low, a low or declining DPS is caused by declining profits, increased investment needs, expansion, opportunities for growth, or financial challenges. While the effects is that it reduces attractiveness for income-focused investors and could result in a low share price if confidence in the company's ability to maintain dividend weaken. This is critical because the effects of a lower declining DPS can scuttle the company's opportunities as a result of lower share price if confidence in the company's ability to maintain dividends weaken, especially distribution on a yearly basis, as contained in the policy. So in conclusion, dividends per share is a crucial measure for evaluating a company's dividend payout and its commitment to providing income to shareholders. It serves as a reliable indicator of financial stability and profitability for investors seeking regular income so most investors look at the dividend policy of the company and where there is a consistent uh, requirement to declare profit. Most investors are attracted to such companies. And where the coming and this regular income is not attainable, then they become frustrated. So regular income and distribution of dividend is key. And the DPS helps evaluate and assess this. So a consistent or growing DPS can boost investor confidence, while significant courts may raise concerns about the company's financial health in the eyes of investors or owners of the company. This is critical and must be looked at from both ends, from the investor's eye and from the company's eye. So balance is key. Communication is also key in situations where dividends are not declared or will not be declared. All right, that's a wrap up. This breakdown on dividend per share. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of how this metric plays a crucial role in both investor or investment decisions and corporate financial health. But I'm preparing for exams or applying this knowledge in your day-to-day -day work life. 
EPOs is a concept that every finance professional must grasp. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video for more practical financial insights. See you in the next one. Until then, bye for now.